Welcome to Easy Limo Learning Simplified. My name is Eric. I'll be taking you through this topic, angles and plane figures. And for this particular lesson, we'll be covering introduction to angles and plane figures. So you want to see what angles are and what plane figures are. And uh, possibly we have questions on the same to help us with illustrations on what that is all about. And of course, at the end of the lesson, we'll have some assignment just to help us with uh, uh, practicing and just to help you check on your understanding of the concept as you're going to discuss during this particular lesson. So when you talk about plane figures, we have an example of like maybe if you look at the, the, the surfaces on the walls, they are flat. Those are the ones you are calling plane, plane, you can call them plane surfaces. So if they are given in figures, you know, you can talk of a plane figure, you know, like maybe uh, a, a, a cuboid, you know, we, 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 we have So maybe you have something like the screen of your of, of, of your laptop or the screen of your phone, you know, that is what you call a plane surface. So when two planes intersect, you know, when two planes intersect, they form a straight line, you know, the intersection between walls and floors and floors, which have, if you see a wall where the wall is meeting the floor, you know, if you look at that edge there, that's what you're calling, that's what you're calling a... Uh, it, it 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 forms a line now when we have the lines intersecting lines intersecting they form a point for example you have you have uh, you have this line meeting this you see they form a point you know that point is called a vertex so in math we'll be calling it vertex we may not be calling it a point so every time we talk about vertex that is what should come into your mind you know So when two lines meet, as you have said, they form an angle, they form an angle at a point. So you can see this one here is what you're calling an angle. You see, an angle. So the point where the, the, the angle is formed is called a vertex. Or already you have talked about what a vertex is, or we call it the vertex of the angle. And the symbol, uh, this symbol here is normally used for angle. So you can talk of that symbol and then A, B, C. This we mean we mean the angle ABC, so it should be the angle in between. Yes. So we have the line AB and we have the line BC and they form the angle at B. The vertex is formed at B at, at the middle. So you could talk of this line written this way, or you could talk of ABC, and then the, 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 the symbol is written on top of B. This signifies where the angle is formed. So the symbol is used to denote, to, to de, denote an angle. And an example is this one here, where point B is the vertex of the angle between AB and BC, and the angle is referred to as either angle ABC or angle B. You can use either of the two, this to help you indicate that that angle is at B, and it is formed in between the lines AB and BC. So we have different types of angles after illustrating what an angle is that angle is formed when two lines meet you know what the space in between them this is what you're calling an angle you know so, so we have different types so the, the 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 way that space is formed between the two lines that are intersecting will determine the type of the angle that is formed so there are various types of angles like the angle could be acute so every time you talk about an acute angle what comes into your mind you know so what comes into your mind when you talk about acute angle is as illustrated. So angle that is between zero and 90. You see, anything between zero and 90, we call it acute, you know. So it is that, as you see, so it could be angles like one degrees, one degree, or three degrees, or 40 degrees, you know. 50, so long as it is in between 0 and 90, even 89, this is still acute. The moment it gets to even 89.9 is still acute, but if, when it gets to 90, the name changes. So the size of that space between the two lines will determine the, the name of the angle. So if it is anything between 0 and 90, see, anything between 0 and 90, we'll call it acute, acute angle, and you should be able to give examples of acute angles. The moment that angle gets to 90, now the name has changed. You see now, 
the angle has gone to 90, so it's called a right angle. So a right angle is an angle which is equal to 90 degrees. So previously it was acute, now it's 90. So 90 is called right angle. So we talk about right angle. So right angle, we normally use this symbol. A line, there are two lines meeting, and then we use this, this box here. When you see this box, you know the angle in between is 90 degrees. We'll not tell it's 90 degrees, but uh, that symbol, when you see it, you know it's a right angle, right? It's a symbol used for right angle, that space in between and then that box. Now, uh, we have this, the one that now has gone past. At exactly 90, it's right angle, but what if it goes past 90? So past 90, it could be 90, but less than, more than 90, but less than 180 degrees. We call it obtuse. So you see? We have the two lines intersecting, but we are still widening the space between them. So that determines, the, as, as you continue moving the two lines further away from each other, the name of the angle keep changing. It started from acute, it went to right, now it's obtuse, you see? So an obtuse angle is an angle that is more than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So the moment it gets to 180 degrees, that is something else. If you reduce it and then it reaches 90 degrees, that is something else. So it has to be exactly between not equal to 90 but more so like 91 for example degrees 120 150 179 you see and so on and so forth all these are angles are called obtuse they are angles that are less than 180 and uh, greater than 90 degrees so you see now this has gone to so you keep you kept you kept on uh, st straightening or, or widening the space between the two lines that were intersecting. And finally, you reached an angle of 180 degrees. So we call it a straight angle. And now you have this. So before we go into this, we have Okay, so we have reflex. So reflex is an angle that is uh, more than 180. So you kept increasing the space in between them until you got to 180 degrees. Uh, you, you, you went past 180 degrees. And you can see now, this looks more or less like the, the, the acute. So what will make it reflex is when you draw this, this line here. You, 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 you indicate that symbol there. So you see, it looks like acute. So if you 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 do you do, you do you draw this curve here, that makes it acute. But when the curve is drawn on this other side, that makes it reflex. It means the angle on the other side. It means the angle on the opposite side. So this one here. So this is reflex and approximate side. So we have examples. We have examples of reflex like 181. 190, 230, 300, 320. All these are angles between 180 and 360. Right. So you, the, the list could continue and continue and continue. We have like 355, 359. So the moment it gets to 360, the name changes. We call it, we call it now angle at a point. And we will be looking at those other angles later on. Angle at a point or sum of angles at a point. So that is what we call a, a reflex, reflex angle when it's less than 360 and more than 180 degrees. And the symbol, please take note, it looks like acute. So if you just make a mistake, again, if you just draw it like that, it doesn't make sense. See? So it, the, the line has to be drawn, the curve has to be drawn on this other side. That shows that the, the angle we are talking about. Again, it's not, it can even be drawn this way. But you have to label it on the other side. So we have these two categories again, complementary angles. Now, complementary angles, we talk about they are normally two angles, such that when you sum them up, you get 90 degrees. Like which one and which one? 30 and, and 60 degrees. As long as you are able to sum them up and the answer is 
90 degrees, we call the complementary angles. They complement each other. So angle X plus angle Y is equal to 90 degrees. The angles are said to be a complement of each other. So we can ask you, what is the complement of 20 degrees? So you say complement. Complement of 20 degrees is 70 degrees. In short, we're asking what do you need to add to 20 to make it 90? You know, complement of 50 degrees, for example, is 40 degrees. And 40 degrees is also a complement of 50 and so on. We have another one called supplementary angles. Again, there is a, a set of two such that they, they add up to 180 degrees, like 100 and, so EG, 180 degrees. These are supplementary angles. So each, either of the two is said to be a supplement of each other. Like supplement, supplement of 30 degrees is 150 degrees. You see. Again, supplement of 50 degrees is, so that is, that's how we, we, we name supplementary angles. So long as they're able to add them and the answer is 180, we call them supplementary angles. So we have a few questions here to help you practice on what you've been learning through this lesson. Otherwise, that marks the end of the lesson. Until next time, goodbye.